we'll be using SWI Prolog to write our Prolog programs. So let's see how we get SWI Prolog and then get it set up so that we can start writing Prolog. So we'll open up a browser and we'll go to the SWI Prolog homepage, which is swi-prolog.org. And there's some really nice documentation and tutorials here, but what we're going to be focused on is we want to download SWI Prolog and we want the stable release. Make sure you don't click the development release. The stable release is what we want. And then you can see the different versions that you have. And so you'll select the right one for your particular PC. We'll select Microsoft Windows 64-bit. And you'll see there's some stuff about how sometimes this gets classified as malware. And you should be safe downloading this. So we'll click on the download link and wait for it to download. And once it's done, we'll open it. This will open the installer. Yes, we want to install it. And we want to agree to the user agreement. And then you don't really need to add SWI Prolog to the system path. It's up to you if you want to use it from the command line and so forth. However, maybe you'll want to create a desktop icon. Again, that's up to you, but the default should be fine. We'll have it add to the start menu and we'll just leave these components that it get installed as the defaults. We will not even begin to scratch the surface of, of most of these, but it just makes things easier just to install everything. So now that it's done, we'll click finish and let's go ahead and close the browser. And to test that it works, let's look in the start menu and you can see that it's recently added. And then there should be a folder for SWI Prolog here and you can see some different things. So let's click on it and you can see that it runs. Welcome SWI Prolog and there's some information there. So let's move this down here. This is not an IDE. This application is what we're going to use to run queries on our Prolog program. Now there's no editor built in here, so we'll need to edit the file some way ourselves. Now you can use any editor you want, but to keep things simple, I'm going to just use notepad and I'll create a very simple prolog program. And I'll keep it very simple for now. I just have a few facts in this database. So I want to save this. And again, you'll save this wherever you store your school documents or your development documents. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be a place that you have access to. And of course, you want to make sure it's a place that you back up regularly. I'm going to actually create a folder called Prolog. Make sure you don't save it as a text file. You want to select all files here so that you can add your own extension. And here we'll call this switest.pl and we'll save it. And so now I can come to my Prolog window and I can consult C Prolog SWI test.pl. And notice it says true. And you'll notice I had to escape the backslash. If I just have one backslash, then it'll escape the next character. So the two backslashes gives me the one backslash in the file name. So now if I say language English, it says false. But if I say language Java, it says true. And I can say language X, X is a variable here, and it'll give me prolog scheme in Java. So prolog is working. Now, of course, this is a very simple prolog program. We'll see some much more advanced examples later on, but this is enough to let me know that everything's working. One other thing. So if I open up the system explorer and navigate to the prolog directory where I saved my code, and I don't think this is set up just right yet. So let me open with, and I don't want to set this to open up in an editor because I want it to actually open this in SWI Prolog. So if I come down here, SWIPL and bin, and so again, this is just where I installed SWI Prolog. This SWIPL-win application, that's what we're looking for. And so now you'll notice that the icon changed. And now notice that it opened with this file that I created. So if I say language scheme, it reports true. I actually have loaded that file in memory. And if I edit this, and again, if I right click and say open with notepad, and again, you can use any editor you want. It's completely up to you. In fact, I would actually recommend using Visual Studio Code. 
and you'll see in the videos that I switch between Visual Studio Code and Vim as my primary editors, but I'm using Notepad here just to show it doesn't matter. Just use whatever you're most comfortable with. Now, if I add a new language, and I'll save this, if I say language C, that fails because it actually doesn't get the changes. I actually have to do the consult. And so now you can see that that's true. Now, if I say language C, it's true. So again, once you consult, it's the, it's compiled and it's in memory. That's what you're getting. If you update the file, you need to reconsult it before you launch it again. So that's how we download and get started with SWI Prolog. At this point now, we can write whatever Prolog program we want, and we can run it in SWI Prolog.